Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. Thank you for turning my channel. If you're a returning customer, welcome back. If you're a newbie, hey, welcome. Again, four things I, I always ask. Hit the subscribe button, bell notification, hit the like button. Yes, I do answer the comments. I do answer questions. However, if there are extensive questions, I will always guide you to my webpage because I'll be more than happy to answer them one-on-one. -on -one. Remember, I, don't, I can't answer them fully because you and I haven't talked yet. So usually what I do, I just give my best general opinion. But yes, I had one question asked of me, and that is, what is the difference between serapeptase, nanokinase, and lumbrokinase? Now remember, all three of them are considered proteolytic enzymes, which proteolytic enzymes, they, what they do is that they're protein digesting enzymes, which they will eat or dissolve proteins in the body that don't really belong. So I hope you watch this video and enjoy and leave a comment down below. Thank you very much. Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. I had a viewer write in and suggest, can you do your next video on the difference between serapeptase, natokinase, and lumbrokinase? And I've done, that was a great idea, thank you very much. I always appreciate ideas. Now what I did is that I've done a previous video on serapeptase and I did a video on natto and lumbrokinase and I put them in the links below. So those individual videos are, the links are down below. This is just kind of summary of overall three. Now remember when it comes to these products, they're all considered proteolytic enzymes. What are proteolytic enzymes? They're protein digestive enzymes and basically what they do, they eat or dissolve the proteins in the body that they don't serve a healthy purpose. And that could be scar tissues, that could be just plaque buildup for, again, for uh, uterine fibroids, it could be ovarian fibroids, I have a lot of, you know, uh, block fallopian tubes, so forth and so on. So you could use these products, remember, but you have to use them on an empty stomach. Okay, so what is, what is the difference between serapeptase, natokinase, and lumbrokinase? They're phenomenal and they all have their certain purpose. So the common role of all three of them though is they regulate inflammation and fibrin in the body. Fibrin is what's used to make our clots. They signal the body to stop producing fibrin. In addition, it eliminates excess fibrin. So when the fibrin builds up, which is the clot, it kind of takes it away depending on what product you're using. Now the question is, how do these proteins build up? How does the excess fibrin build up? And they're called rogue, rogue proteins. One, it could be a couple things. One, it's an inflammatory response that went from productive to unproductive. It could just be too much buildup of the scar tissue. It could be an autoimmune condition that is causing damage to healthy tissues. It could be buildup of unhealthy tissues, fibrin in the thyroid, Hashimoto's. It could be in the pancreas as type one diabetes. It could be endometriosis. It could be ulcerative colitis. It's an autoimmune response. In addition, protein rich outer coverings of a virus that allowed it to attach to healthy tissues. Lyme disease, now with Lyme, when I was doing the research on lumbrokinase, if you have Lyme disease, do the research on lumbrokinase. It's phenomenal for Lyme disease and the dosage is a lot higher. So I encourage you to do your own research. Okay, so what's the difference between serapeptase, nanokinase, and lumbrokinase? So let's start off with serapeptase. Serapeptase, I've done videos on it before and they're, they're in the links down below. Serapeptase is great for healthy inflammatory response. It induces fibrolytic, anti-inflammatory, and anti-edemic activity to tissues. This helps dissolve scar tissues related to inflammation, like uterine fibroids, blocked fallopian tubes. It's superior, its anti-inflammatory effects are due to its ability to dissolve the fibrous and or scar tissue due to inflammation. Now, the benefits of using serapeptase. Pain reduction due to the ability to block the release of pain-inducing amines from inflamed tissue. Amines are these signals that signal our body that the tissue is inflamed. So it's phenomenal for fibroids, scar tissue, systemic inflammation, chronic pain, serapeptase. Now the dosage varies according to the condition. Okay, next, nanokinase. Nanokinase is phenomenal for vascular inflammation and is loaded in vitamin K2. Vascular inflammation in the arterial walls can close the vessels as the plaque builds up. So if you have inflammation, 
in the arterial system, I always say like the piping system. Now the inner piping, the inner wall is called the endothelial lining and when that gets inflamed, scar tissue builds up which will cause a narrowing of the arterial system which will make the blood thicker. This is phenomenal because it dissolves the blood clots. It contains high amounts of vitamin K2. Now K2, what that does, that kind of pulls the calcium where it shouldn't be and into the bone where it should be. I've done multiple videos on that because low amounts of K2 can cause calcium to build up in the arteries and the tissues. And calcium, I'm sorry, vitamin K2 and magnesium. Now there's 10 different types of magnesium, so please do your research on which magnesium is needed. K2 and magnesium is critical for regulating the calcium in the body. So the benefits of using natokinase, it's a potent blood clot dissolving protein and blood thinner. So it's great for clot prevention. It's phenomenal for lowering blood pressure. It's phenomenal for stabilizing cholesterol because cholesterol has multiple purposes. One of them, it's, it's, it's used as the arterial band-aid. Arthrosclerosis and stroke prevention. So nanokinase is phenomenal for vascular inflammation. Next, lumbrokinase. Lumbrokinase, when I did the research on lumbrokinase, I don't understand why they don't use this more because it's nature's natural blood thinner. They've been using it in other cultures forever. It's phenomenal. So it promotes both fibrinolysis and fibrinogenesis. So it can both break down or build up fibrin. So what happens is that when the fibrin is present, it breaks it down and when it's not there anymore, it stops the mechanism. This is good because it prevents hemorrhaging. So depending on the body, body's needs. So it helps maintain a proper, a very, very healthy cardiovascular system. It gives healthier blood, it lowers blood viscosity, which is, it makes the blood not as thick, which you don't want thick blood pumping through these arteries, and it supports a healthy cardiovascular health overall. This is phenomenal for overall health, heart health. Benefits, only active in the presence of fibrin. So if there's no fibrin, it stops doing the mechanism. We need that, it has its own stopping mechanism. So it's great for angina, diabetes, heart disease, Lyme disease. Lyme disease, yes, because remember Lyme disease, the protein rich coverings of a virus. Stroke prevention, DVT prevention. So it's phenomenal for overall cardiovascular health. Now with lumbrokinase, it's 300 times more powerful than serapeptase. It's 30 times more powerful than natokinase. You could take all three of these if you, you know, depending on what your goal is. You gotta take it on an empty stomach. The dose varies according to your condition, so please do not email me and ask you for doses. Do your own research. So I hope this helps. Thank you for the person who wrote in this, this question. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video. Be good.